Thank you for watching this video on scanning tunnel microscope. I hope it really helps you. Thank uh, you. Now what you can see is a schematic representation of a scanning tunneling microscope. Now what is a scanning tunneling microscope? It is an instrument for imaging surfaces at an atomic level. Uh, it basically helps to visualize regions of varying electron density and infer position of individual atoms on the surface of a lattice. Now it was invented by George Binning and Heinrich Rohr in 1981 and they were awarded a Nobel Prize for their invention in 1986. Now this is usually based on uh, the principle of quantum tunnel. Now I would be explaining In the functioning of a scanning tunneling microscope uh, now, what is a scanning tunneling microscope is based on the uh, is based on quantum physics. A normal electron microscope uh, uses the particle nature of light, but however, scanning tunneling microscope uh, uses the tunneling effect, which is uh, which is a phenomenon of uh, which is a phenomenon of quantum physics. Now, as a particle nature, if a particle such as an electron when it behaves as a particle, if it goes and hits a barrier having greater potential than uh, it than itself, then it will immediately be reflected back. If suppose V is greater than E naught, but when we are considering an electron as a wave, this electron, when it even when it hits a uh, barrier of greater potential such that V is greater than E naught this will equ uh, this will be able to pass through tunnel to this barrier this is the tunneling effect now uh, we are going to focus on the tunneling effect uh, uh, on the stm which is a scanning tunneling microscope now the scanning tunneling microscope usually it has a, uh, this is a schematic representation of a scanning tunneling microscope it consists of a tunneling tip and the sample now the sample usually has to have a conducting surface through which the electron can tunnel up. It, uh, this is a potential difference V is applied across the tunneling tip and the sample so that whenever potential difference is applied, uh, in the, this um, tunneling tip can be closer to the sample and electron can tunnel up through the tunneling tip and, and this potential difference will be, the potential difference will um, create a current through it and this current will be detected through the feedback loop and the topography and we can analyze the final data. Now there are two modes of a scanning tunneling microscope. One is the constant height. Now uh, one thing I need to make clear, this is the scan, uh, this is the tunneling tip and this is the surface, irregular surface. Now suppose the surface has a large number of irregularities. One is the constant current and one is the constant height. Let us focus on the constant current mode. Suppose is that this surface has many surfaces like A, B and C. Now this is the tunneling tip. Now the current generated is inversely proportional. The current generated is inversely proportional to the distance between the tunneling tip and the surface. Now suppose the tunneling tip is closer to the surface at this level. There will be, uh, be a strong current generated. The moment this tunneling tip shifts towards the region B, the as the distance is increasing between them, the current will decrease. So uh, the current will vary. We have to make a constant current. So the, accordingly, the tunneling tip will move down. So the, the current remains constant. So the distance will vary. So when it goes to B, uh, to make us uh, to maintain the same current, we have to maintain. We have to maintain the same proximity between uh, the tunneling tip and the sample. So this will be the difference. Again when it moves to C, it will change accordingly so that the height will change accordingly so that the current remain, the current detected remains constant. So this is the constant current mode. This, the, the, the change in the tunneling tip, the motion of the tunneling tip through the cylinder as it is uh, will detect a sensor on the surface like this so this is going to be passed through the feedback loop and the feedback loop and it, the, the data will be to, uh, in the through topography we can analyze the data now in the in the constant constant height mode this is the this is the tunneling tip and we have to maintain a constant between this sample and the tunneling tip this is the tunneling tip 
constant height mode and this is the tunneling tip and this is a sample now in a constant height we have uh, this of course the as the tunneling tip moves across the sample the there will be varying current generated as here the current as the distance is very less the current generated will be higher and as it moves to this place there will be weaker uh, there will be comparatively weaker current generated because the distance is increasing so that you can understand that as it moves across the surface the current generated will be varying now this uh, this different uh, level of current generated is actually again sent back to the feedback loop and which is again uh, with the help of topography it is analyzed so there are two modes one is the constant current mode which as we saw that uh, the constant current is uh, uh, the constant current has to be maintained because of this the distance and the tunneling tip is moving up and down across the surface so uh, the current remains constant and the tunneling tip moves down accordingly and the constant current is maintained and this move this motion of the tunneling tip is actually uh, scanned and is sent to the feedback loop now you must be curious as to what kind of substances can be used as sample Re remember as electron is tunneling through the sample the tip the su the surface of the sample uh, should be a conducting surface so of course biologically uh, bi biologically live samples uh, usually cannot be used in a scanning tunneling microscope but uh, for physics and chemistry purposes to predict the dimension of the substance up to 10 to the power minus 10 uh, meters that is 1 armstrong now here we are using the phenomenon of quantum tunneling which i have explained and as uh, as we are using the sample which is the conducting surface we have to uh, keep in mind that the tunneling tip is also very thin it is uh, for the order 1 nanometer so that the tunneling effect can take place this amplify uh, this amplifier is there because the, to detect the current and the current is usually very weak so this amplifies the current and sends it to the feedback signal and from there uh, this is a computing device which is computing the thing and all the scan con and this this is actually the scanner on which the sample is kept 